Uh, hi everyone. Uh, uh, I am Ishar Karnaratne, and uh, Farasat also joined with me on this webinar. So welcome you all to this webinar. Uh, in this webinar, we will discuss about uh, sign in with uh, Apple and uh, a zero code integration approach using uh, WC2 Identity Server. So since Apple introduced this uh, identity provider capability, uh, it was a burning question within the industry on how to integrate uh, this sign in with Apple feature into their business. Uh, with the help of uh, uh, WSO2 identity server and its uh, architecture, uh, this integration is just uh, a few configuration changes in uh, WSO2 uh, identity server. Uh, there's no uh, code change required even in your application or uh, even uh, in the identity server itself. Uh, you can just uh, set up a few configurations and uh, enable a sign in with Apple feature uh, into your application. So in this uh, webinar, we will discuss about uh, sign in with Apple feature then we will uh, describe what happened behind the scene and then definitely the challenges and uh, security issues uh, have in this uh, current implementation. Then we can discuss how you can integrate uh, this feature into application uh, with WSO2 identity server uh, without any uh, code changes in your application. Then, uh, Farsat will uh, do a demo on how to do this integration quickly. Then, uh, obviously, uh, this feature is not directly usable in your CIMA solution. That need a uh, different change. So we will discuss different patterns and different use cases, how we can uh, use sign in with Apple feature uh, in your uh, application. Uh, so we'll, uh, you already know that uh, in uh, Worldwide Developer Conference in 2019, Apple announced this uh, sign-in with uh, Apple, the new identity provider feature, uh, which is going to mandatory for all uh, Apple uh, store apps soon. So with this effort, uh, Apple tried to provide a better user experience for their consumers through enhancing privacy and seamless login uh, access uh, across the web and uh, native applications using their Apple ID. Uh, there are two-factor authentication support, uh, the anti-fraud detection, and one-touch and friction, frictionless access are incorporated with this uh, sign-in with uh, Apple feature uh, for the purpose of better user experience and security. According to the Apple, uh, uh, all the app developers must implement this uh, sign-in with Apple capability uh, wherever they already offer another, th uh, another third-party single sign-on system uh, within their application. So the next question is why we need uh, sign-in with Apple uh, capability into your application. The, the simple answer would be uh, who wouldn't want to connect with the consumers who are using 1.4 billion devices into, the, into their business. So in consumer uh, IM perspective, this is a great opportunity for enterprise to seamlessly connect with worldwide users who are currently using uh, around 1.4 billion Apple devices. Uh, sign in with uh, common identity provider is a not uh, not a new thing in IAM world, but uh, this uh, brings kind of uh, uh, native feature or uh, this is a kind of opportunity for the Apple users to interact with their favorite brand and it will provide a unique experience for uh, Apple users. And another highlight on this feature uh, is uh, that Apple provide the capability to select whether to share your real email address or a random uh, but real and verified email address within the application, to the application. So in that case, if you go for that option, uh, you may not share your real email address, 
but we will share another random email address so the application can send email but it will ultimately 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 deliver into your uh, real account at any point if you want to disable that thing you can just go and disable the, this thing even this is also not a new feature if you uh, familiar with the google so you can add plus or dot into a, your uh, gmail address this is something similar to uh, this uh, approach so let's see how uh, this really works so anywhere we can uh, the apple uh, doesn't document how this works so actually it seems they are using uh, open id connect uh, authorization code grant flow behind but it's not fully compatible with the open id connect authorization code grant flow there are slight variations but the core is uh, authorization code grant flow so there are ram two main steps in that flow uh, the first uh, flow is uh, the application will talk to apple and uh, do the user authentication and it will send authorization code uh, back to the application and then the application will use that authorization code and exchange that code into a uh, id token which contain the user information and an access token uh, so this is the the flow in brief so if you if you go with the apple uh, uh, ui so first uh, when you try to log into your application with uh, sign in with apple feature you will be first redirected to the apple so then you get the option to enter your apple id then uh, uh, you add the credential then it will go for the second factor authentication so it can be a, a, a one time password a six digit one time password or you can use the touch id likewise the, the second factor authentication uh, after the this second factor authentication you get the option to select the email address so you can select either to share your real email address or you can select to send a random but verified email address to the application so in the apple's perspective they are not going to uh, store other user information so they they store only the the user's email and they can only share that email address with the rest of the application even with this feature they uh, limit that as well so instead of providing the real email address they will just send a random uh, email ad address which can't be used to track the real user in the second step what they will do is they will get the authorization code which is sent by the apple then it will exchange for id token and the access token so in when we talk about this feature this id token uh, is the the key component because that contain the user's information so that can be used for the uh, authentication purposes so uh, the as I said earlier, there are challenges with this implementation. So still this is in the initial stage. So there are many challenges. So main concern is the security challenges. So uh, if you read about these things and you are trying to integrate Apple, uh, sign in with Apple into your application, you might have seen that uh, this open letter from OpenID uh, Foundation uh, to the Apple regarding the concerns uh, related to this uh, implementation so uh, since this is not fully aligned with the uh, open id connect authorization code grant flow their request is to comply with that thing so if i highlight several concerns they have raised so uh, this nonce parameter is not sent with the id token so in that case it is uh, susceptible for the replay attacks then the uh, pixie is not used here in that case uh, it can be uh, used for the code injection attacks and at the same time if you think about the single page applications or the the mobile application they can't uh, protect this uh, client secret or 
the private key within the application which can be used which should be used to generate the client secret so th that is kind of a, a issue in the in the client application side and again this prompt parameter is not uh, worked as expected so in that case we can't explicitly enforce uh, to authenticate or get the content from the user so these are kind of security challenges we face uh, with this implementation hopefully apple will fix those issues and these challenges going forward and when they really uh, expose this feature to outside so we all waiting for that thing so uh, if we think about integrating uh, this capability into application we also face several uh, developer or development challenges the main concern is the lack of documentation still there are no proper documentation on this feature so uh, developers still try with uh, trial and error mode so they will face the, uh, the, the issues and try to fix this so that's how uh, still people work on this thing so it's better apple come forward and fix this documentation related issues then uh, the client secret this is not the the normal way open id connect use so clients uh, has to derive their client secret uh, using the information they get after registering the application in the apple and using the the private key uh, this is uh, kind of not easy task and this uh, sign in with apple the protocol it not fully comply with the open id connect hence even there are uh, different client libraries to uh, use for the open id connect we can't directly use those stuff there should be modification uh, for the client libraries due to this reason again this is uh, open id connect based hence if there are applications uh, that support saml or other uh, identity or federation protocols we can't use that feature uh, and in when we think about the the im use cases or the uh, consumer I, im use cases there are different requirements so we have to provide multiple login options it can be either uh, different uh, social identity provider login options or different accounts likewise and uh, in this uh, feature they only provide the email. Sometimes it can be a random email which does not directly map to the actual user. But in the in the real CIME use cases, we may need different uh, user attributes. We may have to get uh, the user's email, uh, the phone number, or the delivery address, or the shipping address to ship some items. Likewise, we have to build the profile. So along with the user, email address it doesn't work so going forward if you want to this uh, feature we have to address these challenges as well so uh, here onward uh, uh, farasat will uh, describe you guys how to use this feature and how identity server support this integration and later we will discuss how to overcome these challenges and implement different uh, CIMA use cases with uh, WSO2 identity server using uh, sign in with uh, Apple feature. Over to you for us. Yeah. So um, as a developer, like uh, when you want to implement a uh, sign in with Apple, uh, like so as we looked at like there are certain challenges that you face uh, one of the most like uh, challenging task is that uh, you need to like change your code to uh, support uh, sign in with apple um, so what we are going to propose yeah. so what we are going to propose is uh, a way to make your application like future proof so that uh, whenever uh, a feature like uh, sign in with apple or sign in with an, another idp comes out so you can easily roll out that to your application without uh, actually doing a code change uh, so the first step is like uh, usually like most of the applications that we use in an enterprise uh, scenario uh, talk in standard protocols like standard protocols like either open id connect or saml or 
like there are other protocols like uh, WS federation and so on uh, yeah so so like uh, if your application is uh, one that speaks open id connect uh, it would be much like relatively easy for you to like uh, implement uh, sign in with uh, apple but the problem is uh, sign in with apple is going to be just one of the options that you're going to give your user uh, most probably it will be like a se secondary option that you're going to give your users uh, to like enable them to reuse their existing accounts um, yeah uh, so the first step in like uh, going to this zero code approach is uh, making your application uh, speak in a standard so most of the time uh, if you already speak in a standard protocol this would be much easier uh, if not, uh, there are approaches to uh, where you can uh, use libraries or like uh, 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 introducing a layer on top of your application, uh, such as filters uh, and agents uh, that would uh, do the uh, communication in a standard protocol on behalf of your application. And thereafter, the next step is like you introduce an IEM layer. Uh, so typically, an IEM provider. So uh, so uh, something like WSO2 identity server, or there are other uh, choices for you to uh, select uh, as IEM providers uh, that could uh, connect applications uh, that speak in standard protocols. Um, so the next step is uh, like, as we saw in our like, uh, as we saw before, uh, sign in with Apple like follows uh, open ID connect protocol. Uh, so somewhat similar to OpenID protocol. So if your IEM layer or IEM provider uh, supports OpenID Connect Federation, uh, it would be just a matter of uh, configuring uh, Apple as a trusted identity provider, and then uh, connecting your uh, connecting uh, the identity provider, sign in with the Apple Apple as the identity provider into the uh, authentication flow. So uh, in the beginning, this might seem like a drastic change, but uh, as we go on in the presentation, like we would see like what sort of benefits and uh, what sort of advantages that you get uh, as, uh, as you like go in future. So uh, I would like to like show this integration, like how we could do this integration with a demo. Uh, for, for this demo, uh, like, so I wanted to take a, a application that speaks in SAML uh, so that uh, we cannot directly uh go on implementing uh without a code change if the application is saml uh, and like uh, in most enterprise scenarios uh you would not have uh like if it is a third party application uh chances are that like uh, you being able to change the code to support something like that is very uh, minimal so uh so let's assume that uh, so for for our demo purposes i'm going to use a saml application uh and that I have already configured that in uh, identity server as an application. So let me show you. Um, so let me log in. So I've already like connected this uh, sample application. Uh, so using SAML. Um, so we should be able to. Uh, So, uh, so when we log in, like, oh, give me a minute. So that's already. Let me confirm. So let's go like uh, step by step on how we could build the functionality. Uh, so in the beginning, uh, you would have uh, your application to, uh, connected to your IEM provider, uh, and you would only typically have uh, typically authenticating the user with a plugged in user store. So in my case, I would have a user uh, who is like uh, in a user store. So I don't have any options like so. So suppose now I want to uh, enable uh, sign in with Apple to this application. So, so the so the typical approach would be 
I would be modifying the code and then uh, trying to implement uh, Open ID Connect uh, on this application. Uh, but like, if you go with an integration approach, like now we have decoupled uh, the authentication part uh, from the application. Now, uh, what the application simply does is it uh, calls the IAM layer uh, and uh, ask to uh, it to authenticate the user. So, how you authenticate the user? is like uh, decoupled so so we can uh, so the, the the first instance i showed was like now the user is authenticated using a local uh, user store plugged into the iem provider so um, so as i said now we can simply uh, since apple is uh, simply an open id connect flow uh, we can uh, configure it so so this is uh, the generic uh, way of uh, uh, configuring open id uh, connect so you basically would have a client ID and a client secret. So so how this differs from usual Open ID Connect flow is uh, so when if you take a, a Open ID Connect provider like Google, uh, once you register the application, you would get the client secret like uh, created by Google itself. But Apple takes a slightly different approach. Uh, so based on some information that you get uh, during registration, like such as the client ID. Uh, and uh, the Apple team ID and so on. Uh, you have to generate your own uh, client secret. Um, so that can be done. Uh, so we at the towards the end of the slides, uh, we have resources and like blogs uh, pointing to exact steps that you need to follow. Uh, so the Apple documentation has some information uh, regarding to like, so what sort of information that uh, you need to put in to create this client secret. So let's assume that uh, we have already created this. And the other important points are the token, uh, the endpoints. So, uh, so these information, uh, like the the information about uh, the authorization uh, URL and so on, are not there in the documentations. Like these were uh, the result of the community trying uh, like trial and error and uh, like figuring out how this works. And uh, this, uh, there are a few things like we noticed like when uh, during uh, authenticating with sign in Apple is that. Uh, 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 things like uh, are not consistent like sometimes uh, uh, it tends to work the first time uh, and then it fails like there, there's no clear indication of uh, why a flow fails so that's something that uh, we hope apple would work on so uh, basically you just need to fill in this information and uh, then you create the identity provider so i have uh, so i have configured google as well uh, so which we can use later in the demo. So basically we have the uh, We have configured Apple as an identity provider now. Uh, so the, the now the part is to engage Apple into our application. So that's quite simple. So So any IAM provider you take uh, would have this functionality like to add a trusted identity provider and then uh, it would have a way to uh, engage that into the authentication flow. So in WS2 identity uh, server we, for each application you can uh, either like go with a lo local authentication method such as uh, basic authentication or like you can go on with a uh, federated IDP. Uh, so so in this case, like I will choose the uh, Apple identity provider that I created uh, to the authentication flow. Okay. So now uh, once I do the login, So now instead of my uh, local authentication page, uh, I will be redirected to the Apple authentication page. Uh, so like few peculiar things I noticed was that, uh, so um, so Apple does not give you a single sign on experience. Like, so if you take Google, uh, so once you log, log in in a browser, and if you attempt to log in again, uh, usually it does not ask you to re-authenticate. Like it, uses the existing session and uh, authenticates you but uh, app, with apple like it's uh, it, uh, it forces you to uh, log in every time you try regardless of whether you have already logged in uh, to the account uh, using the same browser so that's uh, like a slightly different uh, experience i faced uh, when uh, configuring apple uh, sign in with apple uh, the other thing is like uh, as my colleague explained uh, 
apple enforces uh, two factor authentication so if you don't have uh, two factor authentication configured for your apple id uh, you would not be able to be uh, uh, you would not be able to uh, try this flow um, and uh, the other thing is like usually uh, this two factor authentication uh, prompts uh, uh, otp uh, prompt uh so in the slides you would have seen the pictures uh, but uh, notice that sometimes uh, that doesn't work so as a fallback method i am going to go for text so let me wait for the text Sometimes it takes a bit of time. Yeah, so the idea is like, uh, yeah. So this is that uh, prompt I was talking about. Uh, so, yeah. So it takes a bit of time, uh, might be due to some network issue uh, within the network. Uh, so like either you will be, you, so once you uh, like click on that prompt, uh, you will be sent an OTP to one of your trusted devices. So usually I get a prompt in the same laptop. So you, you could just simply enter it. And then, uh, so another peculiar thing is like, so only during like the first, so when you log into an application for the first time, only for the first time, it will ask you whether, uh, whether it would, uh, whether you would like to share your real email with the, uh the application or not uh once you like uh, uh, do the selection thereafter any login you do it does not ask that option like it simply remembers that uh, and then you just yeah so uh, like as my colleague said like uh, so right now uh, we were not able to like uh, get the get any other details other than this uh, uh random identifier so user id that is sent by uh apple uh, one reason is like uh, unlike open id connect where you can like send uh, scope values and uh, get some uh, user information uh, apple does not seem to respect that at the moment uh, hopefully they'll fix that so like uh, so like in a few like in few minutes you can uh, if you have the im layer connected uh, in few minutes you can like roll out uh, sign in option like this so uh, let's say now uh, let's say you want to add another option like something like google so that would be like again uh, simply adding google uh, like creating an application at google site then uh, uh, providing that uh, details and adding uh, google as a trusted identity provider and then simply uh, going to your application and then you can simply say that you would like to either give the op user the option of either authenticating with apple or with google so you simply roll that out update, and then so you so this page is like uh, customizable so i just hack it up for the demo um so so you could like simply roll out a, like a multi-option uh, multi option uh, feature uh, like without even touching your application like so so once you connect to uh, the iam layer you have like uh, the the possibilities of uh, doing things on the authentication flow are like limitless you can engage policies you can uh, you can like uh, enforce authorization rules and so on so like if you see you you can uh, let the user either choose google or like uh, so apple so the point is like so as soon as you like uh, start speaking in a standard uh, protocol and yeah as soon as you start speaking in a standard protocol and like uh, connect to an iam layer uh, uh, thereafter like uh, the authentication flow uh, you can change your authentication flow dynamically without like uh, impacting your application 
so this your application simply needs like uh, simply uh, sends a request and it expects the response in a particular protocol so if it is saml it expects a saml response that's it so the uh, how it authenticates like uh, uh, what we do in authentication is like not embedded into the application so your application like uh, becomes application code becomes clean and free of this authentication logic so uh, so that's the main advantage and like uh, when we go move into an enterprise like uh, environment uh, uh, so we we cannot like simply have this apple sign in like baked into your application so one reason is like uh, um, in an enterprise like environment like we use different applications like for example salesforce uh, people hr uh, like g apps and so on like so each of these applications are going to be be speaking in uh, like they, they are default by default they can speak in different protocols so so imagine like you having like you having to uh, support sign in with apple for each of these applications you have to start changing the code uh, making modification to the code to support this one feature but like once you have a iam layer in between um, so you you don't have to change anything uh, like you don't have to change you don't have to change anything in the application side uh, what you need to do is on the iam layer side you change yes. how the user authenticates so so this multi protocol login is an important uh, like use case when i when it comes to uh, uh, enterprise environment and the uh, so the other is the account linking part uh, so as i said like uh, uh, mostly the sign in with apple or sign in with google uh, will be provided to a user as like uh, a social login option uh, but like he would uh, have a like a static account or he, usually he would have a corporate account uh, that he would use to log into his application uh, so uh, so if you have an iem layer you can do this account linking so you can allow the user to sign in with like different options uh, but uh, ultimately like uh, you can like identify uh, based on this account linking and uh, provide his like uh, the, the the usual corporate account to applications and then uh, when it comes to like uh, uh, so this is like uh, an important like principle uh, that's like bring your own identity so uh, so when it comes to applications uh, we need to give the user the freedom to uh, uh, use an existing account so so as my colleague said uh, one of the most uh, like important and uh, uh, important reasons why people will uh, start supporting this is like they it has a very large ecosystem of nearly like 1.4 billion accounts so uh, 1.4 billion identities that can be connected to a system uh, 1.4 billion identities that can be reused like so every time you see a sign up page like people tend to get fed up so instead of like forcing people to create accounts locally uh, so we can uh, support this uh, multi option logins with like uh, uh, popular uh, identity providers uh, to enable uh, p uh, enable users to uh, reuse their identities so um, the other uh, aspect uh, that we need to consider when like uh, doing uh, like introducing uh, uh, a new sign in with option like sign in with apple is like so though like uh, though sign in with apple like provides you a way to authenticate uh, most of the time like to uh, to provide a meaningful functionality uh, in the perspective of iam like you you would need more information about users so so your application uh, generally would need something uh, beyond a user identifier so so if you take uh, uh, order system uh, so so if you take an application so it would need uh, some uh, human friendly uh, identifiers uh, or email and so on so so but uh, sign in with apple like at the moment it gives you a random identifier so there may be like instances where you need additional claims so uh, so how would you gather those additional claims so those things can be uh, automatically done by an iem layer like uh, when uh, so the, so the application can like define what what are the claims it uh, requires for its functionality and uh, the uh, the iam pro, uh, provider uh, 
uh, upon authentication can uh, like uh, check whether the required claims by the application uh, are fulfilled if not it can uh, prompt the user and uh, get the missing claims so that's one uh, other aspect that we need to think uh, when we talk about signing with uh, apple um, so uh, so this uh, so this approach is not just limited to wso and server like it can be implemented with any uh, iem provider that uh, supports standard protocols so a standard protocol to connect your uh, application and uh, if it supports uh, open id connect uh, federation uh, it should be able to uh, implement this approach and uh, a few things about yeah uh, uh, this is a bit about wso2 identity server so wso2 identity server is a fully open source uh, product under apache 2.0 license and uh, it has a very inherent ex extensible architecture so you can uh, build a tailor-made IAM uh, platform uh, to cater your requirement. So at the moment, we, we are managing uh, around 100 uh, uh, plus a million identities around the world. And across the world, we have around 150 production customers. And uh, there are around <coughs> excuse me, 500 plus uh, education institutes uh, using WC2 Identity Server. So for the WSO2 identity server, we provide 24-7 uh, support and we have officers globally uh, in US, UK, Germany, Brazil, uh, Australia, and the, in Sri Lanka as well. Uh, so uh, we are one of the uh, open source IAM solution recognized by the, the uh, this analytics, uh, analyst. So uh, recently, uh, uh, Carpenter Call uh, analyst uh, identified uh, we were as a leader uh, in the CIM and an innovation leader. So uh, this is a bit about uh, WC2 Identity Server. So uh, here you can see several links we have written about uh, sign in with Apple feature and how to integrate this uh, with your application. So uh, please go through these links and. Uh, try to use identity server and easily integrate uh, sign in with uh, apple capability into your application so uh, yeah that's all for today oh thank you for joining with this webinar so, so if you have any questions like uh, please go ahead and post on the chat and if you would like to uh, like try out this uh, so we have a set of uh, resources like blogs and documentation like how we uh, tried out uh, sign in with Apple and like so what sort of configurations you need to do on the uh, Apple developer side uh, and so on So if you have any questions, please post on the chat so Yeah, uh, so far, no questions. So uh, maybe uh, if you have any questions, you can email us uh, into our public email list. And even you can go through these uh, uh, documents and articles and see how uh, easily you can do this configuration. Thank you.